Chris and Jeanette have asked me to um, give my take on today's discussion, summarise what, what took place. And I must say the discussions have been immensely wide-ranging, both in topic and in the diversity of speakers who've taken the floor today. First of all, we looked at the status of IPv6 availability around the world. And this was a lively discussion informed by the feeder workshop on IPv6. Overall, we saw this as an example of the internet in transition, a bit like uh, the migration from leaded to unleaded petrol, that for a time it's very rare, then you have coexistence, and then gradually you move across to the new system. Hearing real-world examples from governments, vendors, internet service providers, they talked about their successes and also the obstacles in their path. One interesting highlight was that people were starting to say that the demand is now coming from the end user, from the customer, and uh, rather than just simply a push of information from the number resource allocators. The landscape is certainly changing fast, and we were told to beware of outdated information, particularly on equipment and capacity. And one speaker encouraged us to articulate the benefits rather than just the depletion of a waning resource and what IPv6 could open up. And lastly, the situation of developing countries was highlighted and, for, and one speaker said that they may be in a position of advantage comparatively because of the lack of legacy equipment. But of course, that equipment still costs. Secondly, we moved on to the internationalization of critical internet resources, both the management and enhanced cooperation. And for me, this took us across the following two items as well. So last year, at this discussion, we talked about the affirmation of commitments, which had just been released, and the first applications for non-Latin script top-level domains. So many speakers in, in, um, discussed and emphasized the importance of this topic to them and within the IGF. We heard about the steps taken by ICANN since the affirmation of commitments. We heard from the chair of the committee looking at accountability and transparency within ICANN. The relationship was mentioned between the number of users and the number of registered domain names in a territory and it will be interesting to see the impact of deployment of non-Latin character domains in the root on this. We also heard about cooperation between the GAC, the Governmental Advisory Committee, and the ICANN Board, with other stakeholders as well, and the tangible result of a creation of a knowledge database between country code top-level domain managers. So moving on, we looked at a sharper focus at new top-level domain names and the introduction of non-Latin scripts in the domain route. We heard reports from the feeder workshops which looked at both the opportunities created by internationalized domain names and also some concerns about whether this would actually close or increase the digital divide. But speakers talked about the great benefits that can be brought to national businesses, e-government, enabling local language content. And we also heard about the working group set up by ICANN specifically to look at what can be done to assist needy um, applicants. Our last look was at disaster recovery and crisis. And we heard of the remarkable achievement of the Haitian registry in ensuring continuity of service despite the destruction, complete destruction of the local in infrastructure. And this also emphasized the importance of hearing multiple viewpoints. He talked about the political pressure to have the infrastructure just provided locally versus the influence of industry best practice and cooperation which tended towards geographical diversity. 
and a healthy reminder, a timely reminder, that when we talk about management of critical infrastructure in many countries, we are sometimes talking about one or two people. A point was made that Haiti has implemented IPv6. It's not just a question of money, but shows the benefits of cooperation. And we also heard about the responses of natural, to natural disasters in New Zealand, the ITU's role in restoring satellite services, and what is being done on the ground. One speaker also mentioned the importance of geographical diversity in protecting data and backups, and the interesting conflict between national laws on uh, data protection, which may inhibit this, and this perhaps is a, a topic that demands further thought. So next and lastly, we looked at the other threats, not natural disasters, but sort of operational, technical, and policy, and the need for people to operate at the interfaces between these areas to enhance understanding, although no new organizations were called for. In contingency planning, we had the example of the Netherlands, where there was a cooperation between the government and its local country code registry, which fulfilled the government's obligation to plan for disaster without undermining the self-regulation of the registry. So what have we learned over the last five years, and how has the discussion moved on? Personally, I really see a difference in the nature of the dialogue, how it's conducted. This set topic was felt to be a bit too hot even to qualify for a main session in Athens five years ago, and we took our first tentative steps in Rio. By Hyderabad, we had the confidence to start this format of open discussion, and through the next two years, I would say that the level of outright disagreement, the acrimony has reduced, and the level of information exchange, real-world examples, has increased. A great deal of the heat has gone out. The dialogue is more wide-ranging. It's not as fast progress as any of us would like, as all of us would like, but I guess that is the corollary of cooperation between stakeholders and consultation. It takes time. But here we have been talking about the experiences of the Russian registry in implementing domain names. And both in naming and numbering, the essential blocks are there. But they're not there as an end in themselves. They are there as an enabler to extend the reach of the internet to all people, all languages, and local content. At a higher level, I think we see the impact of the IGF in two respects. We are encouraging stakeholders to climb out of their silos where we were stuck five years ago. And I think this is a tribute to the non-threatening environment here. And secondly, the importance of people sharing their experiences. This is all new stuff we're discussing today, IPv6, new internationalized domain names. People here are working on things that have not been done before and on which many millions of people depend. Things don't always go right, but overall what I take away from this session is the willingness to cooperate. It helps to share both the problem and the solution, to be honest about things that didn't go right, but overall to celebrate our successes. Thank you.